My Lords, that concludes oral questions for today. Private notice question on Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe, Lord Fowkes of Cumnock. My Lords, I beg leave to ask a question of which I have given private notice. The question is as follows. To ask Her Majesty's Government what action they are taking to secure the release and return to the United Kingdom of Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe. Yes. My Lords, it's unacceptable and unjustifiable that Iran has chosen to continue with this second wholly arbitrary case against Nazanin. Iran has put her through an inhuman, inhumane ordeal. We continue to call on Iran in the strongest possible terms to allow her to return to the UK to be reunited with her family. The Prime Minister raised her situation with former President Rouhani, and the Foreign Secretary continues to engage with Foreign Minister Amir Abdullah Hayyam, uh, most recently on November the 8th. My Lords, uh, can I first commend the bravery uh, of Richard Radcliffe in his determination to get his wife home safe and say that we understand why he and, and it was right for him to do so, to end his hunger strike. So will the Minister now confirm that there's no doubt whatsoever that the United Kingdom Government owes Iran £400 million for tanks the Iranian government paid for but were never supplied. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, that the Prime Minister, when Foreign Secretary, he pledged that that debt would be paid. And it is further acknowledged that when it is paid, Nazanin will be released. So can the Minister use his undoubted influence with the Prime Minister <laughs> to get him to make it his, now his top priority? to resolve this issue, to get Nazanin released and returned home to her husband and her daughter, because it's the Prime Minister's moral duty to do so. Yeah. 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 Uh, like, like the noble Lord, I too want to recognise the commitment and huge sacrifice uh, that's been shown by Mr Ratcliffe and the families of other British detainees in, in seeking the release and the return of their loved ones detained in Iran. So we continue to call on Iran to end Nazanin's suffering immediately and to allow her to return home to her family in the UK. But I do need to be clear, in place of my friend uh, and colleague, noble Lord Ahmed, who's not here to answer the question, that the UK does not and never will accept our dual nationals being used as diplomatic leverage. Our priority is securing Nazanin's immediate release so that she can be reunited with her family. While it's absolutely right that the dreadful detention of uh, Nazanin um, Zaghari Ratcliffe should be kept totally separate from other issues and relationships with the Iranian government, could, could my noble friend just explain a little more why, what are the delays in the payment of the proper debt for the uh, chieftain tanks that were never delivered? It seems to me a straightforward matter, entirely separate from this horrible detention issue, which surely could be settled and settled. <laughs> Can you explain what the delay is, which yeah, we yeah. don't understand? Yeah, yeah. 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 As, as we've said, and, and I know my, my colleague has said many times from this dispatch box, we are exploring actively uh, the options to resolve this case, but it is not helpful in any way at all to connect wider bilateral issues with those arbitrarily, arbitrarily detained in Iran. It remains in Iran's gift to do the right thing and to allow British dual nationals home to be reunited with their families. Radcliffe and I associate my, myself and colleagues who have met him with, with the noble Lord Lord Fawkes's uh, comments. In May, the Foreign Secretary said that the treatment of Nazazin will amount to torture. It, there is no point in a British government making clear assertions on the contravention of a UN convention if it doesn't follow through with any actions. When I asked Lord Ahmed why the government had not formally requested Iran to investigate the accusation of torture, he said that he would ensure that it was in the Foreign Secretary's briefing pack when she met with Richard. So why hasn't the government undertaken to formally request Iran to act on the convention for which Iran is actually duty bound to, co to carry through? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my Lords, no one disputes that the treatment of Iran of Nazanin and others in similar circumstances is inhumane, it's cruel, it exceeds any normal boundaries of 
behaviour by a state, and it's completely unacceptable. But I can't add more to what my colleague, uh, Noble Lord Ahmed, has answered just a few weeks ago to the same question. I, my, my lords. Do we owe money to Iran? If we do, why isn't it being paid? Yeah. 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 My Lords, the, uh, the payment of the IMS is a long-standing case relating to a historic debt owed to pre-revolution Iran, and we continue to explore options, as I said before, to resolve this case. My Lords, the House's attention to my, my anxious side. My Lords, may I, may I draw the House's attention to my entry in the Register of Members' interests, and may I totally support what the Noble Lord uh, Falks uh, has said. I think the behaviour of the Iranian government is disgraceful in this affair. But the government have not been clear. They have been very ambiguous in answering questions in this House about this issue, including, as was said, with the last debate in which this was raised. Will the Minister confirm or deny that it is actually fear of American sanctions that is, prefer that is preventing this money being paid? My Lords, uh, from my vantage point, and I couch it in that, I'm absolutely certain that the uh, premise of his question and the assumption within it is not correct. My Lords, uh, <laughs> my lords following these questions, um, may I ask the noble lord, the minister, whether he thinks what, what he thinks governments on both sides uh, might have to learn from a simple prayer that was prayed this day uh, in Coventry after the destruction of the city. It's a simple prayer, but it's a brave prayer. Uh, it simply says, Father, forgive. It doesn't, of course, try to um, forgive the other side. It, it doesn't even uh, try to absolve uh, the other side from responsibility. But it does say that somewhere along the line, both sides, in whatever proportion, need to accept that a very deep hole has been dug and suffering people fall into it. And in this case, there is a suffering woman at the bottom of it, and her husband and her child. Um, can we not do more to accept that there is something that we have a responsibility for? Yeah. Yeah. My, my Lords, I just do not accept, and the government cannot accept, that we have responsibility for the incarceration and appalling treatment of Nazanin. Naz this is a decision made by the government of Iran. It's a decision which they can reverse. But of course, we will and continue to do and as much as we possibly can to secure her release. And that's why this issue, this appalling case, has been escalated to the highest level, uh, and not least in the form of diplomatic protection, which means that the case becomes a case between states uh, as opposed to prior. My, 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 lord, my, 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 my lords, uh, many people still do not understand the issue of the £400 million that we owe Iran. It keeps getting raised. The Americans have paid money to the Iranian government despite their sanctions. Could the minister please explain clearly what's going on? And could I say to him that many of us who've met Richard Radcliffe on his hunger strike outside the Foreign Office have given him an undertaking that we shall continue to press the government. This will go on and on till the government does something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My Lords, the government is doing something. The government is engaging at the highest possible level, whether it's the Prime Minister, the previous Foreign Secretary, the current Foreign Secretary. Engagement happens on a very regular basis. Uh, so I just do not accept the idea that the government's doing nothing. However, were the government to pay hundreds of millions of pounds to the Iranian government, that would undoubtedly be seen as a payment for a hostage situation. And that is not something which is... Noble Lord, will the noble, will the noble, will the his answers in relation to the four hundred million pounds? Does he accept that an international arbitration tribunal, an independent tribunal, has ruled that this country owes four hundred million pounds to the state of Iran? Does he accept that? Does he also accept that it's vital that this country complies? with its international obligations to meet international arbitration tribunal reports? And does he also accept that to pay that sum without further delay would be to meet our obligations and not to pay a ransom? Yeah. My Lords, no one uh, disputes that there is a historic debt 
one which was owed to pre-revolutionary Iran. We, there's no dispute about that. There's no debate. However, here we are, answering, here I am, answering a question about Nazanin, and yet the majority of questions relate to that money. The, con the combination of that issue with the issue that we're dealing with, which is a, a human case and one which is a, appallingly tragic, is exactly what we should be avoiding. Because otherwise this does become a hostage situation and any payment of any money becomes payment for a hostage. And that is not in our international, current or short, medium term or long term interest. Let's, let's put it a different way. Let's put it a different way. When I met Richard uh, outside the FCDO, what he described the policy of the government as a policy of waiting. Now, the noble lord has said, we're not doing anything, we are doing things. Well, what this house wants to hear is what precisely we're doing. And one thing this government should be doing is ensuring that we improve relationships with the government in Iran to ensure that all the outstanding issues, including those that remain in prison, are properly resolved. So what is the government doing? The government certainly wants to improve our relationship with Iran. In answer, direct answers to his question, we have raised this case at the highest levels of government at every opportunity. The Prime Minister raised it with President Rouhani uh, on the 10th of March this year. The previous Foreign Secretary engaged regularly with F Foreign Minister Zarif. The current Foreign Secretary has only been in post uh, for a few weeks, has spoken twice now with, the, with the, uh, her counterpart, uh, most recently just a, a week and a half ago. Uh, our ambassador continues to, and, and the team, wider team continues to lobby Iranian interlocutors at every opportunity, help to secure the release of Nazanin on furlough, continues to push for a full and permanent release, most recently on the 9th of November, and as I said earlier, escalation in the form of diplomatic protection on the 7th of March uh, 2019 represented a formal recognition that her treatment breaches Iran's obligations under international law and raises the status of this case to the highest possible level. My lords, does the, my lords, does the noble lord, does the noble lord, does the noble lord agree? agree that one of the ambitions of this country is that Iran should adhere to the rule of law? If so, should we not be adhering to the rule of law? And therefore, will he now give us a very clear yes or no reply to my noble friend Lord Judge's very straightforward question, yeah. which he has yet to answer? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course, it is, in, uh, it is in everyone's interest that Iran, as a country, adheres to the rule of law, uh, just as the UK does on a routine and permanent basis. My, lord, my, lords, my lords, my lords, my lords. Um, I actually think the government does have some responsibility for the suffering that Nazanin is, is experiencing at the moment, because our Prime Minister actually told a lie about the fact that she was, in fact, teaching journalism. And that meant that the Iranian government was actually much more exercised about her presence in Iran, which was actually only to see her family. Now, has the Prime Minister shown any remorse? The Prime Minister uh, continues to engage uh, uh, on this issue with his counterpart, um, as does the, it, it, the entire foreign set of the FCDO. So uh, the government continues to prioritise this case, um, as I just relayed to this House just a few moments ago, and will continue to do so. My, my Lords, will my, will my uh, noble friend not accept that the answers that he's giving this afternoon stonewalling answers are doing no good to the government and most of all no good to the Zanin Ratcliffe. Can we please, please accept this country does owe this money? Can this money not be paid immediately to the United Nations? That would be a good way of having it transferred and can we not have a positive move to get this poor woman who has been tortured and incarcerated as an innocent being to get her back. My, my Lords, uh, at the risk of being repetitive, I think it would be a grave error for this government to behave as if that historic debt is in any way connected to the, uh, uh, the, the incarceration of Naz Nazanin in the manner in which the Noble Lords suggest. I think it would be disastrous foreign policy. But, but, but my Lords, my Lords, it's the turn of the Liberal Democrats. But, Lord, the problem is that the Iranians regard the two as being linked. And if we will not accept that, then how is the difficulty to be resolved? The Prime Minister made 
uh, very foolish intervention. That increases his moral obligation, one might think. And if there's any question of the uh, government being in some way concerned about the attitude of the United States, does anyone here think that the United States would hesitate for a moment if the circumstances were reversed? Not least because there's very strong anecdotal evidence that President Obama did exactly that, <coughs> release in return for resources. My, my Lords, if, if it is the case that Iran conflates these two issues, and I think he's right in saying that they do, that's even more reason why we should not allow dual nationals to be used as diplomatic leverage.